I am not very smart, but... Ooh, what's this? War. Take Gold Coast. War. <laughs> Wagadugu. That, that's a good name for our country. Wagadugu. That sounds like... Uh, that's basically the country where, where like Black Panther's friend comes from. <laughs> like Black Panther is from Wakanda or whatever. And then Wakanda. I was trying to remember what his country was called. It's like I know it's not Wagadugu, but it, it does begin with a W. And the, it's like Black Panther, and that, then his then his uh, his buddy, the the orange cat or something, is from Wagadugu. His uh, sidekick. He's a rob. He's a uh, the orange cat is a, is a, is a, the Robin to to Black Panther's bat. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the traditional Wednesday, is it? <laughs> EU Four <laughs> Stream. Wednesday, I think. Hi, Alex. So yeah, it's Wednesday. It's EU Four time with me, Bjorn. Community manager for E4 and Mordred, community ambassador for E4. Hi, Mordred, how are you doing? Hello, Bjorn, how are you doing? I'm, ah, I'm doing good. Excellent. Good, good. So, what do we have here uh, for you? I don't think we have that many new viewers, but in any case, uh, so what we're doing here is we're playing Europa Universalis 4 uh, and we are playing as the Congos. And, and the yeah, it, we're playing on 1.33 uh, beta, which is an open beta. Uh, everyone can try it out. We updated it last night to 1.33.2. Uh, you can read the change log, patch notes on the forum, uh, and you can try it out yourself if you want. Uh, hopefully, uh, if everything goes as planned, this is an actual version that we will release on Steam. Uh, and uh, so yeah, if you start a campaign now, there should be no problems just continuing it uh, once when it goes live. So you can start playing it now, and you after we actually update, you should be able to just continue your save, no problem. Uh, what else can we say? Do we have anything else exciting? No dev diaries going on right now, unfortunately. Uh, just uh, open beta. Uh, we will prove. We will uh, continue with Dev Diaries as soon as we uh, actually have some new development. But yeah, currently we're working on 1.33, which you can all see by yourself. Uh, so no need for us to talk too much about the Dev Diaries, etc. Cool, cool, cool. So yeah, uh, the game is still starting up here a bit. So uh, you will soon be able to see the beautiful map. Uh, I think we can see it now. Whee! So yeah, as I was saying, we're playing 1.33. Uh, we are playing using. We are showcasing a little bit the origins uh, content, uh, the content immersion pack. So we're playing as the Congo with the explicit goal of conquering Belgium. That is our end goal, uh, and in the process, we are uh, Christianing the African continent. Not at all. Uh, 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 um, you, no, <laughs> what is it like? Not at all uncontroversial to 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 bring uh, Christianity to Africa. No, no one's ever done that with any problems in the past. Uh, and uh, yeah, w ooh, do we? Yeah, we can talk about that bug that the uncolonized uh, provinces actually are red, which is yes, caused by us s uh, starting this campaign with a mod active uh, that we disabled and that had that beautiful so yeah modern where are we at where are we at what's happening well we are currently in the process of beating some rebels as you said we are converting which i think we are virtually finished a couple of the territories we have gained most recently because we went and smashed up kilwa so we're just taking out more of the coast so that we can get more money because money is good then i think my plan for today is to try to push up into west africa uh, try and get some of the West African coast, and that should give us a bit more of a still. Oh, wow, France has taken Ooh, Spain. Jeez, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> now Aragorn still sits there. And two Sicilies is, uh, r r is going through it's Italy, too. So previously, we know that Spain was under a personal union under France, but apparently they have now integrated it. So that's going to be kind of scary. It's going to be really interesting to see what the new world looks is like. Is that Morocco in Portugal? Uh, Yes. Yeah, look at that. Right, let's start working on these West African states. So starting to... Ooh, we need new air. Ooh, new Ed air. 86 unfortunately died. Oh, no. Okay, since Kotopoulo 1 is the only one who said anything in the... 
in the chat today. I guess he's he is the new heir of uh, the Congolese Empire. Who? What? Okay, we shall we ask him what he wanna be? Kotopulu one, are you still with us? Do you wanna be a local noble, a foreign noble, a merchant son, a talented theologian, or local preacher or papal prodigy? PayPal prodigy. The PayPal protege gives us some um, papal influence. The preacher just makes the clergy like us more. The theologian likes. Yeah, he wanna be a theology. Theologian. Yeah. Kotopulu, our only viewer. <laughs> <laughs> well, taking off the burkas stream. even more. They're never gonna like us. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, 613. Not bad, not bad. That's 10 points. Yep, it's above average. Oh, Commander Faceless is here too. Ah, sadly. Sorry, Commander Faceless. Uh, <laughs> look at that. Marshall Banana came in with a dad joke. Why do you have to pay so much for a Tesla? Because they charge a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's good too. Yeah, no, that's uh, that might earn you. Uh, it's probably going to be a commander next that we're going to have to employ. I'm very happy to report that we have just caught up in all technologies. We are now equal to the Europeans in 1587. Woo! Yeah, they should tremble at the at the approach of the Congolese armies. The technological uh, might of Congo. Oh yeah, we have a reform thingy. Oh, uh, now we're called like yeah. uh, age bonus, but there's nothing interesting left. Not really. Mm, Mercenary guess... discipline plus five or blockade impact. I guess blockade impact because we now do have a navy. Yeah, we do have a navy and we're going to fight a lot along the coasts, I guess. Oh, well, not that much, but a bit. <laughs> a bit. A little bit. Um, How are we doing for naval force limits? We could build another three. Light ships, because I just realized we're not actually exploring anymore, and we probably should be. Can we explore? Like, yeah, I yeah, thought we, we kind of explored ideas. everything. I thought, thought we explored, like, well, there's a lot of, <laughs> lot of, uh, uh, terra incognita, uh, or, what, what, mare incognita? Because I know we've got India right here, so. Oh, yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> India no, is sorry, it's, uh, East Africa. We've got East Africa over here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We still don't know. Actually, no. We we do know about India now. Just mm. I am not very smart. But ooh, what's this? War. Take Gold Coast. War. <laughs> Wagadugu. That that's a good name for our country. Wagadugu. That sounds like uh, that's basically the country where where like Black Panther's friend comes from. <laughs> like Black Panthers from Wakanda or whatever. And then Wakanda, I was trying to remember what his country <laughs> was called. It's like I know it's not Wagadugu, but it, it does begin with a W. And the, it's like Black Panther, and then his then his uh, his buddy, the the orange cat or something, is from Wagadugu. His uh, sidekick. He's the rob. He's a uh, uh, the orange cat is a uh, is a uh, is uh, the Robin to to Black Panther's Batman. I'm just making up. Uh, um, lore here, and uh, that could. <laughs> Manus just rivaled us. Interesting. So we're now rivals with the Bahmanis and the Mamluks, or we will be when we're no longer at war. <laughs> PDX Captain comes in here with some, uh, some glorious, uh, uh, dropping some info on the, the pepper vodka. Still, it's still going on apparently. The youngsters are still drinking it out there, <laughs> and history Podden, obviously he likes it. And PDX Captain, if you didn't know, he's a new community ambassador for Hoi. Hoi4. So uh, if you follow the Hoi4 uh, social medias and stuff, you shall could see the antics of Captain. Which obviously translates into the cat. Which, incidentally, could be is the sidekick of Black Panther. As I said, <laughs> from Wagadougou. <laughs> the cat. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. We have a half price level two. Is that you? Yes, I think. Seven, Seven ducats still seems extremely expensive. No, it's not you. Yeah, that can't be yes, a half price. It is you. You're Protestant. Oh wait, what? Wait, wait. But does level two? How much does level two cost if they're not discounted? Then I don't know. We haven't got any available, so I can't check. Oh no, here's a level two. Six dockets. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's half, though. Yeah, no, that can't be a half one. 
That's a whole fee. But that's also not half. Half no. of six is twelve, not seven. You mean that six is off? Yeah, someone is discounted, obviously. Maybe we have some other bonus that we don't not aware of. This guy's not 50% off either. Advisor cost minus 12, inflation plus 9, over governing capacity plus 2, Where aristocratic is council is minus 25. Okay. The math, it hurts my brain. Can so I think... I can... Ah, I know why. It's because we don't have the estate reducing the cost of the clergy. Mm. That's exactly it. Uh, they used to be crunching the Turkish pepper, this. by the way. I'm sure Shat will uh, enjoy this sound. But yeah, he is not 25% off, so this is fine. We still get them cheaper. Mm. Got some coring we can do? Uh, yes. Done. Uh, <laughs> and some rebels are threatening our our peaceful existence. Stupid rebels. Well, the rebels should be dying, because I've set all of our other armies to bash up the rebels. Ah. Bash them up. Although I should be colonizing another province now. Which one's biggest? That would be the Great Karoo. Recall you and send you to Highveld instead. Is it the, the trader mer merchants that are pissed off with us? Changing my mind. Wait, why did... He didn't send. Want to get the islands first. There we go. And what was that about the traders? Um, yeah, so loads of people have ticked off. So the traders are particularly ticked off because we just chose a theologian. <laughs> the clergy love trades. us and the burkers are just like, uh-uh, never voting for that guy ever again. Nope, we're uh, anti-capitalist uh, religious fanatics here. Go, Jesus! Yes, Jesus. <laughs> Catholicism. We are Catholic, do so, yeah. Do acknowledge that. <laughs> for a second, I was, I was like, are, are the Catholics liking Jesus? Yes, they do. <laughs> Confirmed. <laughs> they do. Uh, what just finished? Ah, missionary. There are only four provinces left to convert. They, well, you can still convert the last one. And one more you can convert. Yeah. Yep. Even better. And then once we've taken out Ashanti, we can go for air. And then from there, we basically just keep on exploding outwards. Or as I like to call them, the sneaker country. Air Niger. Or as I like to call them, Air United, thanks to Quill 18's playthrough. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to do with Air. Oh yeah, we could, uh, you should probably, uh, at least if we could get a proper battle going, like we should probably just have a look at the combat changes for 1.33. That is true. Do we have artillery in our armies? No. no <laughs> we no, can't no. check okay. we have no artillery. Right. So as soon as we get artillery, we'll get into that. Cool. Our efforts to bring salvation to the heathens in Tango have borne fruit. It's the strange and unfamiliar fruit the local population have started to accept Christ. But the faith has been intertwined with old ways. Angels and spirits, the true Lord and the old God of the sky, the blessed virgin, the earth goddess. Do these people really believe what they hear? Or do they simply call the old idols by different names? So we can get animus syncreticism, which gives us even more missionary strength, but less tolerance of the true faith. Or do we want to lose 5% missionary strength? That seems like a lot. Uh, it's only a, it's 10 years, it's not a permanent. And also, we're not going to have to convert much for a while now, are we? Well, we're now in conquering mode, and we're going to have to convert a lot. Are we? Okay. There's a religious map mode, there it is. So, yeah, see, all well, of what were the options? So, what, what were the options? Tolerance of the true faith. We can get even more... Even more missionary strength. I mean, why wouldn't we want even more missionary strength? Because we get less tolerance of the true faith. It's only for 10 years. No, yeah. that one's 20 years. That one's 10 years. Hmm. That's interesting. You don't see many events that have different timings. Ah, weird. Um... I think I'm going to go with the missionary strength, though, seeing as we are in expansion mode. And we're going to be going through Islamic uh, territories, which are harder to convert than fetishist. Yeah, okay, let's do it. <clears throat> I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, King, King, uh, me. Paradox uh, Interactive the first. <laughs> approves of this. Who is still around at the young age of 70. Ooh, look at that. And Kotapulo Kasanya, you are up soon. You shall be up. We are strong. What do you mean? Paradox will never die. No. Immortal. Like, we should have named, like, so we could get Paradox the second. <laughs> Uh, and then he died. <laughs> oh, no. 
Sorry, Katapulu. <laughs> I no, jinxed Paradox it. Paradox died. Katapulu is now in charge. Ooh, okay. Okay, I thought it was Katapulu that died. Uh, okay, so... So, who, who? Commander Faceless was... No. Who yes, was, it was it? Faceless. No, it was Marshall Banana that did that that gave me the dad joke. So, let's go with Marshall Banana. Uh, we're snaking our way up to Congo. No, to Belgium. Well, it is Congo. It's Congo. We're, we're snaking our way up to Congo to be. For the country formerly known as Belgium. <laughs> European Congo. No waffles for you people. Or strawberry bear beer. We're bringing Congo to you. Okay, so now theoretically we could repay a loan. It is now showing us the loans tab. Weird. Build uh, another manufactory. More Oops. manufactories. Everything. The world shall see the the made in Congo is going to be the new thing. Everything. Go to Polo, the first in the Congolese people. Congolese in Congo game plus two unrest all Cuba people. So apparently Cotopolo is from Cuba. Yay! <laughs> Good on you, Cotopolo. That's stuff. Mali a danger? No. The other ones I don't think are either. Okay, let's go for air. Hey. Okay, let's take the sneaker country. Ooh, look at them trying to s scoot around. They're certainly trying. Ha! Okay. You have nothing for that. Procedure. You. I'm fairly sure that we're significantly ahead of these guys militarily. Miltech 11, we're Miltech 12. Okay, we're not that far ahead. Yeah. Good government policies. Yeah, I Money? guess we could use some admi admin power. Admin? Yeah, we don't have much. We're going to need to core shortly. That's true. You're not wrong. <clears throat> oh, air goes all the way up there as well. Ooh, <laughs> okay. damn. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we should have said it like Air Niger should have, should have given it away, right? Yeah, it should have. All right, well, I guess we go and knock out some of their friends in this war. So let's go and take out Dagbon. Can we occupy them? Can we just conquer them? Maybe? Uh, No, because we won't have adjacency, so we don't have a core. <laughs> Damn it. Well, we yeah. Damn it. We would have to take it at the same time that we take out air, basically. <sighs> I mean, what we could do is take... Oh, no, because then we won't have the adjacency there. Ah. I don't have the adjacency with these either. No, but we're going to have to do these one at a time, unfortunately. Mm. Could vassalize them. Yeah, well, let's vassalize them. Congo needs vassals. Do we still have vassals? We still already have vassals. And one of them very, very angry with us. Caragua. Uh, can I start annexing Burundi? Do we have the negative diplomatic... Penalty from having annexed somebody previously. No, we do not. So let's start working on that. So the one that is friendly towards us was Burundi. Burundi. Join the fold, Burundi. Uh, Can't do it? it while we're at war. All yeah. right. No. That's fine. Annexation. If if you one thing in 1.33 just to mention, speaking of uh, vassalization, and annexation. So that's one of the ma main thing in 1.33 for the Celestial Empire that you can you can now uh, uh, convert your tribut tributaries into vassals. Oh, I've been uh, very closely examining the 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 notes. So I, now I'm now I know. <laughs> I don't think I've ever actually played a game in China before. Me neither. I remember it was a dev clash when they when I was so bad and they put me in Ming. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what to do. See how you can fail from here. <laughs> mm. Yep. No, I'm still not very good at E4, especially not the MP 
Uh, but back then I was really, really bad. It's actually kind of cruel to give you <laughs> a noob, uh, like a massive country like Meaning, uh, because <laughs> it's a lot to keep track of. That's true, but for European of Solis, I would say it's easier to play as the big countries than the small ones. Yeah, it's just a lot, especially when you're MPing, like I said, and you're surrounded by other player nations. <laughs> and keep one of, one of which being Kaiser Yuan, if I remember correctly, like harassing Oof, me yeah. in the south. And I was like, yeah. Yuan, we need a name. Ooh, confirm a new leader. Wait, oh, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Who shall we do? Okay, 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 wait, 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 wait. No, I can't <laughs> scroll. I can't scroll the chat. I don't have a mod. I have so many things. Okay, Sparky really, really wants to be one, so let's get the, give it to Sparky. Key. That's not here, spell ETH. Uh, TH. Sparky, Sparky T. It's Sparky TH. You forgot the T behind the Y. Ah, I knew I was forgetting something. There it is. Yeah. Sparky th the first. Sparky. <laughs> it's too bad it wasn't a rule, so it could be like Sparky won the first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And there we go, we can actually do some more explorification. So off we go. Oh, we're negative because you don't have a printing press. How long till oh. we get that? Printing press. We need to print we need to print those Bibles for our for our subjects. Spreading if the good I word. Take out a couple more loans, we could afford that. Or we just get, you know, a little Yeah. I'll spend a tiny bit of uh, military development and then we should be able to just afford that in a month or two. Uh, did we already have it in our country? No, we haven't embraced it yet. No, no, I mean, like, but some provinces has it. Yeah, all of this. Did, did you develop the country that has it, have it, or, or the ones that don't? Uh, I don't know. I did. Whatever's <laughs> cheapest. I hate that development for technology mechanic. I know it's one of the ones it's in the game, you should use it, but I can't stand that one personally. Uh, I actually created a mod for myself to turn that off. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, Commander Faceless. If you if you started out, if you've been with us for a while, then you will probably then 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 it's probably cheaper for you to just buy buy them as they come out. But yeah, if you if you want to get into EU4 now, it's a pretty steep uh, steep cost to get all of it. Uh, we oh, we've know. got a new reform for our Archbishopric. So what do we want to get? Do we want to get subservient bureaucrats, which will reduce our corruption every year? Do you want to get the Zealous Administration, which will reduce our stability costs? Do you want to get the Divine Nobility, which will increase our army tradition and the money loyalty? The money for us are the noble estate. Mercantile Tithe, which will increase global trade power and increase the Burger loyalty and influence. Or the Monastic Breweries. I mean, is, is this really a choice? No. <laughs> it's like you, you had me at breweries. Of course okay. we're going to have Monastic. What, what does that give us? Our production... For grain plus seventy five percent production of wine plus fifty percent goods produced plus ten percent just generally. Do we produce any grain or wine? Uh, we must produce some grain. Look at that! We have a little grain. That was one grain up there uh, around Kubaluba, there. around Kubaluba there. Uh, uh, we have one too. Uh, Songye produces yeah. grain. I mean, once we get rid of slavery, we can probably get a lot more grain provinces. Yeah, but what? Why? What? What's happened to the glorious G Congolese wine production? Like, it's like, no, no one. Like, I mean, who the area is that we should really be checking here is um, whether the new Congolese territories have any wine production or grain production. The answer is no, not really. <laughs> Which is weird because historically, the Congolese and the Belgian wine has always been in high esteem. Uh, among Belgian the wine. I know Belgian beer has been. <laughs> I was a bit uh, ironic here. <laughs> oh. Belgian beer legit is good. I mean, that's what the monastic breweries were. Yeah. It's the Trappist brewers in Belgium. But yeah, no, I was, <laughs> I was making a mockery out of the fact that I don't think there is very few people in the world that has tasted uh, Congolese or Belgian wine. Uh, I would assume. I don't know. Like, I there's probably someone producing wine in Belgium too, but. I can't imagine it's a Schoskvelter, as we say in Sweden. It's like does that I think... mean exceptional quality. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it actually does. <laughs> like Schoskvelter, like something that's uh, hugely popular. Uh, that reminds me of the <laughs> one my, my one of the best Victoria Two games I had was when I was uh, 
I was saying, and then someone started a, a wine, uh, uh, a wine yard in a uh, vineyard, or whatever, uh, in the in the north of Sweden, like in the deep north of Sweden, someone started making, creating wine. <laughs> I was like, this is too good. Like I started to subsidize the shit out. Like this has to happen. So I just uh, uh, subsidized the shit out of the Nor Norland wine production. Ninjas for Real makes a very good point. The flat goods produced modifier is nice. And that is incredibly true because goods produced modifies the amount of gold you produce. Ooh, right. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, we have a lot of... <laughs> We have a all lot right. of... How is our inflation going, by the way, with all this gold? Uh, I just reduced it by about 10. Ah, yeah, it's a flat, flat <laughs> enough. Yeah, no, we had it. We had something decreasing inflation. We had something making it up, but not anymore, right? I think it was probably an advisor. Yeah. Uh, oh, we also have usury forgiven. That's reducing inflation. But our gold inflation is almost equal to that right now. Yep. So it's only going to go up, especially when we take out the Mali region, because look, gold. Mali gold. We need more Mali gold. We do need more Mali gold. The siege is taking an incredibly long time. I think I need another army. And another army means another general. Ooh, another one. Dr. Butsi. I guess. <laughs> because I think Doctor. it's not... I, I, I'm missing a lot of our regulars here in the chat today. But, oh, we also had Ninjas for real one. Is also, he, I guess... Should be up after some time. Who wants to peace? Dagbon. These guys, but that wouldn't have been for a vassalization, which is what we want off of them. Yee. Dr. Butsi. What? Wait, he was a, yeah, he was a, a general, right? Yeah. Yeah. Lead us. Lead us to victory, Dr. Butsi. Was he a good general? He's not bad, actually. Three fire, three shock, one maneuver, one siege. Balanced. Nice. nice Versatile. As, as he, I'm sure he is in real life. Dr. Butsi. He is a doctor of war. <laughs> uh. Circulation of hostile publications. Uh, let's go with the... But we want unrest. the institution... Ah, uh, didn't you cost... Uh, now you cost... Yeah, it may have cost us a little bit more, but we're rich. <laughs> we make a lot of money, yeah, so but, not that yeah, bad. But, well, okay. Mm. Savannah Forks. Okay, so you wanted to see the combat strength of our armies versus our enemies. I know, again, we don't have artillery. They do. Ooh, they have artillery. Um, Why don't we, we have, have artillery? More military tactics, but that's it. Um, probably because they weren't a thing. <laughs> previously. I think they're only recently for us because we've been taking up like crazy. Ah, yeah. Also, isn't it with the changes, aren't artillery less useful in the beginning here? Yes, they are. Because they now take uh, morale damage and will retreat from battles. And if we take a look at the available artillery, Padero and Culverin. I still maintain that artillery in like field armies is not great until chambered demi cannon, leather cannon. Just because of the way that artillery modifiers work. So yeah, let's have so a if quick... we want a siege stack, then yes, we can get five artillery. But more than that, it's not really worthwhile. So have a quick. Uh, let's have a quick uh, explain to us how uh, the changes of the uh, why the artillery is less useful now at the beginning than it was because sure. of the changes. Let me see if I can get into a fight so that I can explain this when we're actually fighting someone, because it would be a bit easier to explain the interface. But yeah, <laughs> some of it doesn't <laughs> get wiped in a second. Ah, uh, wait. So yes, let's. What? Why is uh, Air Niger no longer occupied? Because they unoccupied it while I was trying to siege these guys down. Because ah. apparently these have three forts. Oh, this is one of the changes which I really like. The AI actually builds forts now. This was one of my big problems for a long time. But yeah, the AI will actually start building forts and you can see that Africa is slowly but surely getting populated. Yeah, before. and he's actually building it like because it was a period there when he built a, a bit too many. Yeah. <laughs> and no. that's, that's been tweaked a little bit over time with the, uh, the the patches coming out. We're fixing the AI on that. Yep. And yeah, AI shouldn't be a walkover in the late game anymore because they just don't have any forts. Or if they do, they're all level one. No, they will build new ones and they will upgrade them. So enjoy those forts. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so 
Yep, we continue our little uh, conquest of the... So which way are we taking to Belgium? Are we going through through the Saharan Passage or are we go... Yeah, we have to. I was going to go via the coast. I just wanted to try and get some more of the coast up here so we would be more in range. Whoa, France, what's going on? Ooh. Ooh, Austria. Oh, I wonder if this is a league war. What's happening? Bring up the ledger and see what war we have. Portugal, Ooh. France, Great Britain versus... Austria, Aquilania, Brandenburg, Württemberg, Constance, and two Sicilies. Oh, Austria and two Sicilies. Yeah, okay, that's a pretty big block. Yep. You don't want to mess with them, man. Eh? But France, you would think that France and Great Britain would be a pretty pretty solid force yeah. as well, especially considering the size of France. That's a big conflict. You're saying in the ledger, then it's in relations, current wars. French succession oh, war. Oh, yeah. Succession of who? Oh, Portugal. They're fighting over Portugal. Ooh. Oh my gosh, Second. if France win this, then France will get a personal union with Portugal and Spain. Hmm. But I actually it does not look like that. It doesn't that look like ridiculous. it right now, though. Looks like no. they're getting their ass handed to them. Isn't France being the one fought over? No, because the war leader is Portugal. Fairly sure. I mean, we can check. Junior part? No, you're right. What? France is in a personal union under Portugal. Oh, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> that would be amazing if this at some point turned into Portugal. Yeah, especially considering Portugal is that. Oh, and well, they, oh, oh. they do have the occupied territories up there too. But yeah, currently Portugal is just the Algarve coast. <laughs> uh, this is interesting uh, uh, world politics going on right now. And if Portugal loses this, I wonder if they're going to be able to split Spain out of France as part of the peace deal. Yeah, but because what's going to happen is that whoever wins this war is going to be the new... Like they're Austria gonna be is going to be you, France. Yeah. <laughs> Habsburg, France. <laughs> this is going to be... Like I had a game before with a with a monstrous Austria, but they, I think this might actually be a bit even worse Austria, because this is gonna be one badass Austria. I think I think I think yes, we can now embrace printing press. Here we come. Miltech. Now we have upgraded cannon, so let's take a quick look at the different cannon types. And we've got large cast iron cannon, small cast iron cannon. Large cast iron do more fire damage. The Small cast iron, resist shock damage, and do morale damage. So I think I'm going to go for the small ones. Because shock damage is going to be more prevalent at this stage of the game. And cannon and morale now matters. So because we haven't gone into a fight and I haven't really explained what this change means, I'm just going to try and do that from a bit of a distance because we've only got three minutes of the stream left. So when you're in fights, in battles, there are two rows going on in the fight. So each team has a front rank and a back rank. Um, the front rank is infantry and cavalry, the back rank is artillery. It used to be that infantry and cavalry would go into the back rank while waiting for the front one to clear. That doesn't happen anymore, so the back row is now only artillery. And what used to happen is that artillery would just sit there, just shooting away, bang, bang, bang. And the only danger they would ever be in is if the front rank completely died, the artillery would be pushed forwards and then they would start taking damage. Now, they don't necessarily take strength damage, but they will take morale damage. So once they've taken a certain amount of morale damage in a fight, just like the other units in a battle, they will also retreat. So the artillery isn't just there forever. Because what that used to mean is you would just build enough artillery for one back row, and then that was it. You wouldn't build a single cannon more than this. Now you're going to want to have artillery in your reinforcement um, armies so that you can continue bringing in fresh artillery as the battle goes on. But uh, the previous version, so 1.33.1, artillery took the same amount of morale damage as the front ranks, and they would just retreat just like the front ranks. Uh, now we've reduced that to 40%, so the back row will stick in a fight for longer. So you'll need to play around with the ratios a little bit, um, but they will eventually retreat. There you go. From so, the mouth of the... From the horse's mouth, you hear... The <laughs> <laughs> and you, you, yeah, you, you explain it uh, like I, I'm not too sure. I, I, I'm so bad at like specific mechanics. I, I just when I play this game, like I role play, I don't, I don't go into too, too deep 
knowledge. I think it'll have the most bearing for multiplayer, because I think in single player, most people just roll with several decently made armies anyway, yeah. and you just reinforce with those armies. No problem. It's multiplayer where the change will happen the most. And I'm eager to hear what the multiplayer players think about this. Once they've actually tried it, a lot of people have been theorizing, saying, oh, it's durable. Test it first. Let us know from the testing. Play a few games. Um, I was just thinking, so does... Wait, I, I'm just trying to wrap my head, head around what's happening in Europe. So, Castile, somehow France got a PU over Castile. Yep. Integrated, vassalized Castile, or annexed Castile, whatever. Yep. And then somehow they came under a personal union of Portugal. Yep. Which is super weird. And now Austria is going <laughs> to try to sneak that. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Well, both France and Austria, sorry, both Portugal and Austria had a royal marriage with France. King of France died. Then there's basically a succession war yeah. between Austria and Portugal over who gets the throne of France. Portugal Rip. is the current senior, but Austria says, no, we have a claim to. Yeah, no, it was kind of ballsy of Portugal to actually <laughs> contest that, I'd say. But well, yeah. they would have had France fighting for them, depending on how happy France was. But considering the size difference, I don't think that France is going to be a particularly loyal... Uh, junior partner member. <laughs> Did it, maybe Austria has other PUs that they're gonna uh, uh, enjoy and make stuff? I don't think we can check that from here. They've got a vassal in Aquilenia, but that's yeah. it. A anyway, uh, we ran over time by one minute now. So, <gasps> oh no, we need to shut, cut, shut it down, shut it down. So we'll do the peace deal next time. Yeah, something to look forward to. Yep. A little exciting times and uh, yeah thank you for being with us today uh, again and uh, yeah join us next week for our continuous conquest of Congo and thank you Mordred for playing with me and explaining things so gloriously well thank uh, you also Bjorn for bringing life to these streams <laughs> and don't forget to buy <laughs> your Turkish sponsors. pepper <laughs> and faster don't forget to send me new ones when I finish this Okay, <laughs> thank you everyone. Have a great day, evening, whatever. See ya. Bye everyone. <laughs>